If you're clicking on this video, you probably already know what's going on, but just to make a long story short, Trevor Bauer, who just recently signed a huge contract with the Dodgers, who's the defending Cy Young winner, is under investigation for sexual assault, and he was scheduled to start tomorrow, Sunday, uh, but he will no longer be starting tomorrow because he's been put on administrative leave by the league. And you may be watching this thinking, oh great, you know, the guy who makes video essays about Tim LaCastro and Rod Barajas is going to talk about a sexual assault case. And I think that's a fair criticism. You know, you look at what's on Foolish Baseball. I don't really like cover the news and I don't really cover off the field stuff. But this case in particular feels relevant to me because of who Trevor Bauer is. You know, I'm in baseball media as an independent content creator. I'm trying to have my own platform, and I'm a YouTuber. And all those descriptors apply to Trevor Bauer as well. Now, whether you're a fan, you know, a content creator, a blogger, you know, someone in traditional media, there's always been, you know, two camps, it seems, when it comes to Bauer. And the first camp, you know, is the ones who see him as our controversial golden boy. You know, this is the media that that praises him while sort of just glossing over the controversy. Just to give an example of what that might be like, you know, imagine you're tuning in to Sunday Night Baseball and, you know, A-Rod's doing the commentary and, and Bauer's pitching a great game and, and they're like, yep, there's Trevor Bauer. He's the controversial pitcher. He's a genius, you know, and, and th this is really about like buying into the myth-making that's done by Bauer. You know, they really dig the idea that Trevor Bauer was like, you know, this non-athlete, someone who's not gifted, but who trained hard and who trained really smart to get where he is today. And then as far as addressing controversy, they don't they don't say anything about it. They don't give specifics. They just say, oh yeah, he's, you know, he's known for telling it like it is and that's it. And then kind of on the other side, there's just the people uh, who always just kind of hated his guts. And, you know, a lot of my, um, you know, friends and peers were kind of in this camp. They basically just didn't like his behavior, they didn't like his politics, and they discredited, you know, almost everything he'd ever done on a baseball field, just, you know, bringing up things like uh, his spin rate. And uh, for me, you know, I was in the middle. You know, I'd outright defended Trevor Bauer just from a baseball perspective. In fact, just a few weeks ago, I was talking about how I felt like Trevor Bauer wasn't the bad guy in the spin rate scandal. I thought that the league was the bad guy and that Trevor Bauer had actually done a really good job uh, in terms of, you know, bringing some of that information to light. But I also understood that the people who disliked Trevor Bauer as a person uh, were justified. The fact of the matter is that I have probably the fourth or fifth most popular YouTube channel that talks about Major League Baseball. And when you're in that kind of position on YouTube, you can do stuff with Trevor Bauer if you really want to. You know, countless people I know, you know, good friends of mine, have collaborated with him in some way. You know, they've, they've met him. They've interviewed him. They've been interviewed by him. They've worked for his production company, Momentum, which he's the CEO of. You know, they've done content with his agent. And for the most part, these have been you know, mutually beneficial relationships between content creators and, you know, Trevor Bauer and his camp. You know, Trevor Bauer's trying to break into that content creation space and he's trying to, you know, link up with the right people to do that. And the fact of the matter is, I could have done stuff with Trevor Bauer if I really wanted to, but I didn't. And this isn't about, you know, patting myself on the back, but some of the people who brushed off everything he's done up to this point are facing a reality of their own. You know, they feel like they've hitched their wagon, it seems, to the wrong horse. And, you know, I don't look down on these people, but it's going to be difficult for them to talk about this case if they've ever been, you know, buddy-buddy with Trevor Bauer in the past. You know, in terms of my career, I've hitched my wagon some places as well. Look at my video with Lucas Giolito. I wouldn't have done that with just anybody. I did it because... He's an all-star, and I did it because I just plain like the guy. But what I am guilty of, and still kind of grappling with today, is the idea that there were always signs that Trevor Bauer had skeletons in his closet. 
you know, he harassed slash got into an argument with a young woman on Twitter a few years ago. I didn't care. You know, I always kind of brushed that off. That's one of his most cited incidents, and it just didn't really mean anything to me. Um, he said some off-putting things about his dating life a few years ago. I thought it showed that, like, maybe he was a jerk, but not a criminal. But I also think some people are drawing conclusions that make them feel personally vindicated. You know, they already didn't like Trevor Bauer, and now that he's been credibly accused of sexual assault, they can say, well... I always knew he was a bad guy. Well, I'll tell you what, I didn't know Jack Squat. I just thought he was annoying. You know, I know plenty of guys who act like Trevor Bauer, and I don't suspect that they all engage in sexual violence. You know, I think their biggest sin is just being insufferable. The only tangible reason I can give for not engaging with momentum is that I strongly disagreed with Bauer's stance on climate change. I thought that was by far the most irresponsible thing he'd said or done. The rest, I didn't care about. I was I was brushing it off, just like a lot of people were. Now, as for the case, I will spare you the gory details for the most part. Bauer's defense has settled on the idea that these were rough but consensual encounters. You know, we've seen statements and text messages released in which Bauer and the victim discuss doing certain rough sex acts in a consensual manner. And my takeaway from the documents that have been released so far is that all of that goes out the window when a woman is unconscious. That's just a fact. Even if you discussed certain specific acts, once your partner is unconscious, they can no longer consent. And in fact, Bauer is accused of doing specific sex acts that weren't previously discussed, you know, via text message, on an unconscious woman. To me, that negates everything that Bauer's defense has released so far, but there may be more evidence to show he's innocent. Look, Trevor Bauer has a right to due process, but if it is indeed true that he committed these violent acts on an unconscious woman, it's rape. You know, no need to mince words. So where is this thing going? I think legally it's probably going towards a settlement. And when you get into settlement territory, you have to dispel the narrative that this is being done just so the victim can get, you know, their big payday off a high-profile celebrity or athlete. And the biggest pushback I can give to that idea is to say that a settlement is often the only way you can get something resembling justice in a case like this. It would be really hard to prove beyond a shadow of the doubt that an initially consensual encounter turned unconsensual when she was unconscious. I'd also like to point out a quote from the victim's lawyer. This quote says, Our client truly wants Mr. Bauer to engage in a medically appropriate therapeutic process where he can receive the treatment he needs to never act this way again. Maybe I'm wrong, but this doesn't sound like, you know, lock him up and throw away the key type of language. And, um... Even though I think he should go to jail if these claims are true, he probably won't. So, as for his career in baseball, both short-term and long-term, I have no clue what's going to happen. You know, all I know is that the discipline will come from the league, not the Dodgers. That's already been made very clear. The Braves are in somewhat similar of a holding pattern with Marcelo Zuna. I'm sure they'd love to invalidate his contract, but... They can't stop paying him unless the league does something. I felt compelled to talk about this because Bauer has a really unique position in the world of independent content creation compared to most athletes, especially most baseball players. You know, compared to the average baseball player, he's put himself out there, you know, just far and beyond what would be expected. And I knew I could at least offer some perspective there because, you know, there's a lot of overlap between his world and my world. And look, I don't hold it against anybody that worked with him. I myself was never an outspoken Trevor Bauer critic. I just thought he was annoying. And I think in the future, we should all work with people that we genuinely like and enjoy, you know, rather than ask what type of collaboration is going to get the most views or, you know, help advance my career. And I would like to do a way better job going forward of getting, you know, good deserving people with smaller platforms, their time to shine. 
because we all have responsibilities. The coolest thing about being an independent content creator is that you can choose who you work with. And that goes not just for people, but for companies. And, you know, for example, I don't do gambling sponsorships. That's just my personal choice. And because I have the privilege to choose who I rock with or who I don't rock with, I'm going to do my best not to screw it up for y'all.